Now, finally, I want to cover the relationship between neural events and the bold signal. In particular, I want to cover the shape of how neural activity is turned into a hemodynamic response function. In other words, if you stimulate a neuron, what is the shape of the vascular response? And therefore, what is the shape of the expected bold response? Now, the current theory about how neural events turns into certain dynamics of vascular response is known as the balloon model. And it goes as follows. There's the arterial side, the feeding arterial side. There's a capillary. The capillary is half uh, arterial blood and half venous blood. And then there's the draining um, vein. Now, um, what I'm portraying down here is the typical hemodynamic response function. So if we, if we think of stimulating a part of the brain, and the stimulus is shown down here, the typical function that we would observe in terms of the bold signal has this distinct shape, which is pretty well approximated by a double gamma function, but we will get into this a little later. Now, what I want to show is how do different vascular events give rise to this specific shape. So the first thing that we notice is that there's an initial dip. So the, the bolt signal goes down at the beginning. And there are a couple of hypotheses why this is. The first hypothesis just says that as neural activity happens, there's a sudden increase in oxygen metabolism. Um, one way of thinking about this is that any oxygen that is lying around, you know, just gets captured for the purpose of um, metabolism. And of course, if you capture a couple more oxygens, this will lead to a little more deoxygenated hemoglobin in the veins, which will lead to a decrease in the bone signal. The second theory is that instead what's happening is that as the neural events trigger a relaxation in the smooth muscle surrounding the capillaries, the capillary will expand before cerebral blood flow increases. In fact, the expansion is what calls a greater cerebral blood flow. And so as the CBV, as the cerebral blood volume increases and the so-called balloon expands, um, more deoxygenated hemoglobin can be fit in the same amount of space. Simply speaking, inside the, the capillary, you can just fit more deoxygenated hemoglobin. Simply, you can fit more of it. And therefore, you can create greater distortion in the magnetic field, which shows up as this tiny di initial dip. Now, compared to the main bold response, which is what we're going to see next, this big deflection, uh, it's much smaller in amplitude. In fact, it's even debated if we can truly see it or not with bold. Some studies show it. Some studies don't quite see it. But spatially, it tends to be much more specific. So it would be amazing if we could do bold with this little dip, but it turns out to be pretty difficult to achieve. Now, the second step is this big rise in the bold signal and then an overshoot. Now, the idea here is that, as we discussed earlier, as cerebral blood flow increases, it just results in, um, in a flooding of oxygen inside the venous side of the capillary and the draining vein. As that happens, the, bold, all, the field becomes smoother, protons start resonating at a more similar larmer frequency. As that happens, it takes longer for them to dephase. As that happens, the signal becomes strong. And so that's why you see this big jump in, um, in the bold signal. So in other words, this jump is really the so-called deoxyhemoglobin washout effect. One way of thinking of bold is that it's the consequence of a wash out of deoxyhemoglobin. As the CBF increases and you flood the veins and the capillaries with um, oxygenated hemoglobin, you're displacing and washing out deoxyhemoglobin and you're drowning it in oxyhemoglobin. And so it, de it, it decreases the inhomogeneities of the field. In other words, it makes the magnetic field more homogeneous. Um, right. Now, after the overshoot, we get the so-called plateau. Now, the plateau 
uh, seems to be due to the fact that there's, there's not only there's an increase in cerebral blood flow, but there's an increase in, in cerebral blood volume. And of course, as you, as I said earlier, as the volume expands, given the same amount of, the same percentage of deoxyhemoglobin, you can fit more deoxyhemoglobin, simply speaking. If you can fit more deoxyhemoglobin, it will go back to making the magnetic field a little less homogeneous, so protons will be resonating at slightly different alarmer frequencies. Therefore, they will be dephasing a little faster and the signal will be a little weaker compared to the overshoot. And that's what you see here. So you get this giant overshoot. Then as, as, as the, as the uh, capillary balloons, uh, you get a, a slight increase in the oxygenated hemoglobin concentration. So the idea is as the resistance of the blood vessel right, is overcome, it kind of balloons out and allows you to accumulate more deoxyhemoglobin uh, inside the capillary, despite the fact that it's the same percentage of deoxyhemoglobin as before. You can just put more of it. Um, and finally, the undershoot. And here too, there are two different hypotheses. So after this whole period, we get this big, the decrease in the bold signal and undershoot and return to baseline. Now, two hypotheses for the undershoot. One is that the cerebral blood flow uh, uh, slows down. And as that happens, the CMRO2 remains elevated as the, um, as the amount of oxygen that has flooded uh, the vein slowly decreases. So the CBF goes down. Um, and, uh, and it takes a little longer for the metabolism of oxygen to also slow down. So in other words, you have a little more consumption than before, but you have less CBF. So the signal is more distorted because you end up with more deoxyhemoglobin in the capillary and the vein. The second hypothesis is that, and this is more of an elastic hypothesis, um, the cerebral blood flow remains at the cerebral blood volume remains elevated, the balloon remains sort of open up and it takes a little bit for the balloon to um, shrink back in size. So in other words, the cerebral blood flow calms down, but it takes the, the, the volume uh, returns to normal at a lag. And so if there's a lag, if the CBF has gone down, then what happens is that you can accumulate in this larger space more deoxyhemoglobin. And so this will lead to a decrease in the signal or the undershoot. So this is due to an, an increased accumulation of deoxyhemoglobin inside uh, the blood vessels. And finally, return to baseline. Uh, finally, the, um, the cerebral blood volume also decreases, the balloon kind of shrinks back and returns to rest levels. And as this happens, um, the bolt signal goes back to its initial baseline and then it can restart.